Hey guys, Tom from Photorex here. Um, I'm going to do a video for you today. Um, basically, when I first started this channel, one of the first videos I ever did was all of my gear that I use, uh, lenses, cameras, bags, etc. And that was over a year ago now. And um, my kit's changed quite a bit. I've bought more, sold more. Um, so I thought it would be nice to go through everything that I use um, and try to consolidate my kit. Um, I don't like having stuff that I don't use. So I'm going to go through everything with you today that I own, that I use and um, hopefully if you're sort of considering buying things it might help you uh, choose what you want. So first of all I'm going to show you my cameras. Okay, so here's my first camera. It's my Nikon D700. Um, this is my workhorse camera. Um, I don't think I'm going to be selling it anytime soon even with the new D600 out and the D800 and all this. Um, I'm perfectly happy with this camera, it does everything that I want it to do. It's fast enough, um, the AF uh, autofocus is good enough, the image quality is fantastic, the high ISO is fantastic, the build quality is fantastic. Um, the reliability is good, um, if you've been watching my channel and you kept up to date with me you'll know that I had an issue with this camera, well actually with the lens, um, that caused an issue with the camera. But it wasn't the camera's fault and it got sorted out with uh, Nikon quickly and efficiently so I really can't complain. Um, apart from that one time, this camera's never let me down. Um, so yeah, this is my D700. It's looking a little bit dirty and battered at the moment but um, it does everything I want. I've got my Fujifilm X100. Um, I sold my Panasonic GF1 to get this and I love it to bits. Um, it's got its quirks and it infuriates me at times but the images that it produces are just fantastic and I think it looks really sexy as well. Um, Fuji have just announced the new XE1 which is like a in between this and the X-Pro1 with uh, interchangeable lenses but the sensor from the X-Pro1 and it looks like a really nice camera, really interesting concept but it's priced about uh, I'm not sure what it's priced at I've seen various different prices from 600 to a thousand pounds for the body and I can't justify spending that much at the moment so this thing is staying with me for now um, it fits in my pocket you can take the lens hood off and you've got a really compact portable little camera that's got fantastic image quality um, Sometimes the images that this thing uh, produces is better than the D700. Um, so that's kind of my carry around everyday sort of camera. Um, it's also my backup camera for when I'm doing sort of important stuff. Uh, I've got a wedding coming up soon so I'll be taking this for kind of uh, sly candid shots. And unfortunately that is it for my camera so I've only got two. Um, I sold the 550D. I've sold the D3100, I've sold the GF1, uh, I think that's all I had, I can't remember what I had in the last video, but I might be buying a D90 or a D300 in the next few weeks as a proper um, backup for this wedding. It'd be good to have two Nikon DSLRs so I can have two lenses, wide angle and telephoto, but I'm not sure yet, I'll, um, I'll see. Okay, so next of all, Let's have a look at the lenses I've got. Okay, so you probably saw this attached to the D700. Um, this is my Sigma 70-200 f2.8 DG Macro HSM. It's the first macro edition, not the second one. It's um, I bought this second hand uh, a few months ago and it was an ex-motorsport photographer's lens and it is a little bit battered. It's got a few paint chips on it and scrapes here and there but it's super sharp. I was really impressed with how sharp uh, this lens is. And it's quite light as well. It's not too heavy. Um, and it's quite a nice size. It's not massive. It doesn't extend at all when you focus or when you zoom. It's a bit chunkier, I think, than the Nikon version, but it's a little bit shorter and it's definitely lighter. Um, I paid £350 for this, which is quarter of the price of what the Nikon one is. Okay, so you don't get OS or VR in this, but um, to be honest with the D700, I don't really need it. I can just bump up the ISO and get my fast shutter speed anyway. 
So I can't see me selling this anytime soon either. I mean, it does so many things. I use it for portraits, um, photos of the dog, um, anything really. I mean, it's just a brilliant lens. Um, I took it to uh, a monkey sanctuary uh, a few weeks ago. Got some really nice pictures there of the monkeys. Um, I also took it to a tank museum. I got some pictures of tanks with it. And I also did portraits with it all in the same week. So it really is really versatile. Stunning image quality, stunning contrast. You can just shoot photos with this straight in raw. A little bit of tweak with the sharpness and the contrast and you've got a fantastic image. Also, I've got the Nikon 16-35 to F4 VR. This was a little bugger that caused the problems with my D700 because of a little screw that fell out the back. But apart from that, I can forgive it because it's a really handy little lens. It's not very big. It's quite light. It's got VR. Um, it's got really quick focusing and it's really wide. I mean, 16 millimeters on uh, on an FX sensor is really wide. I don't really ever need anything more than that. So um, I'm really pleased with this lens. Um, I sold my 24 to 70 f 2.8 to buy this. So that's how good it is. Um, I actually sold one of the best lenses you can buy. Replaced it with this. Um, there's nothing more to say about it really. I mean. There's not a great deal of choice for wide FX lenses um, for Nikon. You've got the 14 to 24, which is brilliant, but you can't really use filters on it very easily. It's really expensive, and you've got a massive front bulbous front end on it that's asking to be scratched. Um, you've got the 17 to 35, which was the predecessor of this, which is good. It's a little bit heavier. It's got a metal body, um, and it's still quite pricey. And then you've got this. It's a pretty good price, about 600 to 700 pounds second hand. It's got VR, which you think on a wide angle lens you don't need, but it does come in really handy. Um, because you've got the f4 aperture, you can't always get the shutter speeds that you want in low light. So that VR just really helps you out. Um, I've used this in some really dark places handheld, and um, shutter speeds down to like one fifth of a second, something ridiculous like that. And it's fine, perfectly sharp. And again, with the D700's high ISO. If I need to, I can bump that up and get my shutter speed anyway. So that's the 16 to 35 f4. Next one I've got, you've probably, I think I had this in the last video, is the Samyang 85mm f1.4. Also goes by the name of Rockinon, um, Falcon, Wally Max, or something like that. It's got loads of different names, but it's the same lens, um, just different branding. Um, to be honest, I haven't used this in an age. But it's just so sharp, I can't get rid of it. It's amazing when I do use it. I remember why I love it so much. Um, it's manual focus only. Um, it's pretty much fully manual. This one does have a chip, so I can get metering. And it does read the aperture from the uh, lens, but it's got uh, sort of the old style apertures on there. But you can lock it into f22, and then the camera body will pick it up, and you can change it electronically. Um, it's quite dusty and I haven't used it for so long but yeah it's possibly one of the sharpest lenses that I own when you nail the focus at f1.4 it just blows you away and I got this for an absolute bargain um, I think I paid about £170 brand new with a two year warranty I believe and um, I was just blown away the first time I used it they've actually gone up in price quite a lot I think they're about 275 now that just shows you um, how well these were received when they sort of came out a few years ago. Samyang, I've got some really interesting lenses. Uh, there's the 14mm, they do fisheye 8mm, um, they've got a 35 1.4 I think now, and I've heard they're supposed to be coming out with some other lenses soon as well. So yes, they're all manual focus, but I think every now and then it's really good to sort of go back to basics. And manually focusing this f1.4 is hard, but when you do it, you know you've done it. It's kind of a really good feeling. Yes, I did that. I got that photo. The camera didn't do that for me. And I don't think I'll ever sell this because they sell second hand for stupid prices, about 100 quid. And I can't see the point of selling it for 100 quid. I might as well just keep it for the odd occasion when I want a really stunning portrait and I've got time to manually focus. So that's the Samyang 85 1.4. That's pretty much it for my lenses. Um, like I said, I've really consolidated my kit. I've got rid of a lot of stuff. So I've only got three lenses. 
but I did also buy this recently and it is a Sigma uh, 1.4 teleconverter it's the APO version EXDG so that gives me a bit more reach when I attach it to the 70 to 200 puts it up to like a 90 to 280 I think something like that you lose a stop so it goes up to f4 but that's not really much of a problem I use this quite a lot at the monkey sanctuary place and yeah it's really good it doesn't impact image quality at all images are still super sharp and it's really compact and it comes with this neat little bag as well so I can just pop that in there pop that in my camera bag and I've got that little extra reach there if I need it so that's it for my lenses so see I've only got three lenses plus a teleconverter um, so let's have a look at some other accessories I've got this is the most recent edition I bought this last week uh, specifically for this wedding that I've got coming up I used to have some uh, Nissin, Nissin uh, DI622 flashes I had three of those um, I never used them so I sold them um, but now I've found out I'm doing this wedding I need a flash just in case um, I was going to get the 910 but I thought for the extra money and the amount of times I'm going to use this I might as well just get the 900 um, so yeah it's the SB900 Speedlight with the uh, Nikon diffuser and I've got all the bag and all the gels and all the other bits for it um, I bought this second hand for £230 and um, I previously had many years ago the SB600 and this is a massive leap over that the interface, the build quality um, everything really, the battery door is a hell of a lot better um, I actually broke my Nikon D200 by opening the battery door on my SB600 that was mounted and I pull it down and it just spraying down into the top LCD and smashed it to smithereens but uh, this one's much better um, I don't, I'm not a massive flash user so I'm not 100% confident in all the settings that you can get on this but basically I know you can get it in ITTL and then just kind of shoot around and change the exposure, conversation, everything. I'm pretty confident with it now, but I'm still learning. Um, from the amount of times I've used it, over the last week practicing, I'm really impressed with it. Good power output, good recycling rates. Uh, at the moment, the batteries I've got in here are Duracell Active Charge Rechargeables, um, 2000 mAh. I've had these for a while. Um, they're doing okay at the moment. They've been in for about a week, and I've done probably about 300 shots with them. And they've still got plenty of charge. But I think I might buy some any loop, send you any loops before the wedding, just in case. Um, so yeah, that's my flash. And the other accessories that I've got, but I don't use all that often, is the uh, battery grip for the D700. This is actually the Miki version, or Mikey, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, they're very popular because they're a hell of a lot cheaper than the Nikon version. Obviously this is the MBD10 uh, in Nikon terms. This cost me £40 for the grip, plus I got this little fella, the BL3, which alone from Nikon would cost about £30. So I got the grip and the BL3 for 40 quid delivered from Hong Kong. And the build quality on this is brilliant, it's got the same sort of feel as the camera. Yes, it's plastic, but it does have a big metal plate in the bottom where the tripod socket goes. And when I do use it, it's been flawless, it uh, reads the batteries fine, it increases the FPS to about 8 FPS on the D700. It's got AF on, it's got control dials on the front and the back, and shutter button and on and off. Um, it makes the camera sort of a lot more comfortable to hold for portraits. Um, yeah, it's really good, I'm really impressed with it. And I also have two um, EN EF4 batteries. Um, you have to use these or AA batteries to get the increase in FPS. So I've got two of those. There's another one attached to the BL3. Um, with those two, that will give me enough charge for thousands of shots. I mean, I could last for about three weeks with those two. Um, so that's something else I'll be taking to this wedding as well. Um, hundreds and hundreds of hours of battery life there. Uh, I've also got this uh, Yong Neo uh, remote. This is the MC36B. Um, you can put batteries in it and use it as an intervalometer and all these other fancy gizmos but um, take the batteries out and it just becomes a manual shutter release which is really cool um, for when I'm doing landscapes and that you just plug it in and just press the shutter button that's on here and it will fire the shutter for you 
Um, it's also got a hold function, so you can press that and push for bulb exposures. This was really cheap, I think it was about six quid from eBay. And you know, like I said, take the batteries out and it's just a manual gizmo, there's nothing to break. Or you can put the batteries in and have all the other fancy things, the interferometer, the timer, um, does all sorts of other stuff, but I never use that. Um, the Nikon version of this is silly money again, 40, 50 quid. So can't go wrong with that, I've had this for about three years and dropped it and stood on it and all sorts and it's still fine. So definitely rec uh, recommend that, um, especially if you're into landscapes. It's always good to have a remote release just to eliminate any uh, shake at all. For my X100 I've got two batteries. I've got the original Fujifilm one, uh, which is the NP95, which is great. But if you've got an X100 you'll know the battery life is rubbish. So I also bought this, which is an uh, Innovate uh, um, NP95. Um, it's pretty much the same ratings, I think. Let's have a look. Uh, the Fujifilm is 1700 mAh and this is 1800 mAh. Um, I know a lot of people always ask me and ask in other places, forums and that, what batteries to buy for the X100. I've had this for about four weeks and I've used it consistently and it's just as good as the Fujifilm battery. Um, it lasts just as long, it charges up fine. So I definitely recommend that. Uh, I got this from Amazon. I uh, can't remember how much it was, but it really wasn't much, 10 quid maybe. So yeah, have a look for that, innovate batteries. Um, get a couple if you've got X100 because uh, you eat them up really quickly. Still got my um, faithful friend, the GF Dust Q-Ball uh, dust blower for cleaning lenses, cleaning bodies, and also for quick sensor cleaning. Just blow it in the sensor box, get rid of the dust. Um, I've had this for ooh, since I started photography uh, over 10 years ago. And it can't really break, there's nothing really to break on it, and it's done me fine. One thing I get asked a lot um, is what filters I use. Um, I don't have a massive amount of filters anymore, I sold quite a lot of them. Um, I've still got my Lee kit, uh, the 77mm um, standard adapter and the um, foundation holder. I used to have a full soft grab kit and a full hard grab kit and the uh, big stopper. I never used a big stopper so I sold that. Now I just have 0.6 hard grad and the 0.9 hard grad. Um, I never ever use the 0.3s so I sold them and I found myself never using the soft grads so I sold them as well. And I've got them stored in this nice Lee filter pouch, holds 10 filters, um, it's got really nice soft cloths in there. And I've also got this nice microfiber towel to clean them with, which is quite handy if I just keep in the case. It's a um, Kood circular polarizer, 77 millimeters. Um, does the job fine. The action is nice and smooth on it. The only issue I do have with this is it is really thick, and if you can see there, it's probably a good almost 10 millimeters thick. And on my 16 to 35 at 16 millimeters, it does vignette quite a lot. Vignette, sorry. And um, but Lightroom sorts it out with a little bit of uh, control. So uh, this was forty pounds. I got this from a trade show. I think you can get them for about fifty pounds online. Um, so yeah, that's a really good addition. Polarizers, great for landscapes. The only problem with this one is I can't use it in conjunction with the Lee holder because um, then it just sticks out way too far and so it becomes unusable. So um, I don't want to splash out for a hundred and five millimeter polarizer. It's just not worth it for me, so I make do with that. That's it, that's the only filters I use, um, polarizer and the ND grads. I don't use UV filters or skylights or anything like that. Um, I personally think they're a waste of money. That's just me. Another important part of your photography kit is memory cards. Um, we all you have to use them, there's hundreds of different brands. I personally use SanDisk cards, I always have, and I've never had one fail on me. Um, my main card at the moment is in the D700 is the um, SanDisk Ultra. Uh, it's an 8 gig card, 30 megabytes a second transfer speed. Uh, I've just bought a couple more of these actually for the wedding. So I've got um, three 8 gig Ultra cards. Uh, I've also got an Ultra 2 4 gig card and I have an Ultra 2 2 gig card. 
and just for absolute emergencies I've got some no name 8 gig card, I've never used it, probably never will but I just keep it just in case. Um, with the X100 obviously I need um, SD cards, I uh, don't have one in there, I've got um, SanDisk, SanDisk Extreme uh, 30 meg 8 gig card and for the X100 I've also got the latest um, 90 megabyte second whatever they're called ultra extreme whatever it is i've also got another extreme three uh four gig and another extreme three um eight gig so i've got loads and loads of storage i have got a few more sd cards hidden about places as well sort of eight gig ones um so yeah all my cards are sand disc apart from that one cheapy one and i keep them in this rather nifty um, little case. I actually got this free. I won it in a competition. Uh, I'm not sure who makes it. Um, Gepi, G E P E, Card Safe Extreme. It's waterproof, moisture proof, shock proof, standing on proof. It's a really tough little case. It's really good. And inside it's got um, sort of multi slots so you can put SD cards and compact flash cards in. What I actually tend to do is put an SD card in first and then you can actually put a compact flash in the top so you sort of get double storage on each one which is really good so yeah that's my memory storage I know that my cards are safe also what I do if I'm actually shooting a really big event um, I keep my empty cards label up and then once I've used them I'll put them back in here labeled down and um, so I know which cards I've used so I can quickly just grab one and not end up overwriting uh, one of my cards so that's my memory Next up is my straps. Um, I did a video the other day on one of my new straps, but I'll just quickly run through the ones I've got. This is the um, Black Rapid Sport. I think it's called the RS. No, it says on there. RS One BB. It says on there. Can't remember its full name, but it's the sport version. Um, it's got this bit here, which goes under your arm to hold it really steady. Um, it's really comfortable. Uh, you can sort of walk around all day with this on. It doesn't get in the way too much. It's really well built. Um, it's tangled to hell at the moment. Um, there we go. But yeah, it's a great strap. It's quite pricey. I think it was about fifty pounds, but um, it's good quality and it's well worth it. I think so that's my everyday strap. This is the one that I've just bought for the wedding. This is the Caden um, dual camera strap. Uh, it's very similar looking to the Black Rapid and similar materials. Probably slightly less better quality, but this only costs £16, so what do you expect? Uh, again, I haven't used it yet because I'm just waiting for this wedding. Uh, as soon as I've used it properly, I'll do a full review on it. But it looks well built, it looks good quality, and it's um, also tangled to hell, but it'll do the job. Um, and I've also just got the bog standard um, Fujifilm strap on here. I do also have a couple of other straps um, which I don't use anymore. Um, I can't remember what they're called, so we'll just ignore those. Okay, and lastly, bags. Um, I'm a bit of a woman when it comes to bags, to be honest. I've got quite a few, and I've just bought another one. Um, I'll start the smallest to work my way up. So this is my smallest bag. This is the um, Low Pro Apex 100 AW. Um, I actually bought this years and years ago when I just had a little compact camera, and it's just it was sat in a cupboard. But then, as soon as I bought my X100, I thought, aha, I wonder if that fits in there. And it does. It's actually a perfect fit. So um, I now use this bag to carry my X100 in if I just sort of go out and just take that with me. Um, it's got a nifty little pocket here for a memory card. And it's got a few little bits here. And it's also got, in the bottom, a built-in rain cover. So if it starts to rain, you need to whip that out and cover the whole thing up. It's really compact, it's got a belt loop as well, so you can just carry it on your belt. Uh, great little bag. Uh, this one, um, I bought this the first time I went into Jessup's, which is a British camera store chain. And I bought my first ever DSLR, which was a Nikon D50. I bought this at the same time, so I've had this for years, since 2005, I think. Um, I don't think it's got a model number, and you probably can't buy it anymore anyway. Um, but it's a really handy sort of one body, one lens bag. Um, see, it's just one big compartment. 
and I do have some dividers that divide things up but there's not much point um, I just put a body and a lens in if I'm just sort of popping out somewhere it's got loads of other pockets in the front for memory cards and batteries and two big pockets on either side and a nice big mesh pocket where I can keep a notepad and business cards and stuff it's got velcro and um, buckle closing and it looks quite smart as well with the um, sort of the gold and the black straps quality wise I mean it's lasted this long without any problems at all so I, mean, I can't complain uh, it's got a nice big shoulder pad as well so yeah it's a pretty good bag really I, I can't remember how much it costs but it probably would have only been 20 30 pounds I expect um, sort of five six seven years ago so it's pretty good value really for the amount of time it's lasted this is my other kind of small day bag I suppose you call it I actually bought this on a bit of a whim at a trade show again um, it's the Tamrak Expedition I think it's the five or the six I can't find the label on it that tells me which one it is I swear it had a label on here but um, I've looked all over and I can't find it it's just got a model number there I think it's the Expedition 6. Um, it's quite a nice bag, but the only problem I have with this is that I do sometimes struggle to get my D700 in here when it's got the grip on. And without the grip, it's fine. I can fit, uh, fit in here quite easily. But the thing that drew me to this bag was the side access. Um, it's a shoulder bag, but then you can swing it round. So you'd be wearing it kind of like that. And then you can swing it round and you can actually get into it. Um, that way so you can just pull your body and your lens out, which I thought was really cool. Um, it also opens up at the front there. As you can see, there's quite a lot of space. Um, there's three separate compartments in there. And as you can see, you can stick your hand through. And you can also get to it from that side as well. So it's got three access points, which I thought was good. Another good thing that drew me to this was it has a tripod holder. A little pocket there which you stick a tripod foot in and then a buckle to hold it there and it's got a nice big pocket on top um, you can fit another lens in there another body um, it's also got storage for memory cards and batteries and all sorts again it's got a built-in rain cover just undo that and pull it out and cover it up and it's also got another nice big pocket there for business cards memory cards and whatever got uh, a mesh padded back which is really comfy and it's got more straps you can shake the stick at. Um, this bag actually converts from a backpack like I've got it configured now um, you can actually unhook this strap and tuck it in there and then attach that strap to that side and have it as like a sling bag. Um, I tried that and I didn't find it very comfortable so I gave it up and just had it as a normal backpack it's also got a nice big padded waistband as well. Um, again, I've had this for two or three years. Um, I don't use it all that often, I don't take it out all that often, but when I do, it's been really good. This is my main bag, sort of the sort of big boy bag, if you want. Um, I've had this for many years as well. It's another Low Pro. Um, again, I'm trying to find the label, I saw it just a minute ago. It's the Mini Trekker Classic. Um, I don't think you can buy this anymore. Um, but it's a really good bag, it's lasted really well, it's looking a little bit battered now, but um, again it's got massive storage. I can get pretty much all of the gear I've just shown you in here. You can see that you can fit loads of stuff in and you can configure it all differently however you want it. So I'd have the body, 70 to 200 in the body uh, in that bit. I have um, 16-35 in one of these, the SB900. The battery grip I can even fit my X100 in here as well um, filters and all sort of batteries and other bits in there I've also got loads of pockets which I just keep all sorts of stuff in I've got uh, memory card holder pens business cards tissues plasters um, paracetamol all sorts of stuff just kind of, gen sort of general stuff and um, it's got a nice big pocket here and you put your lunch in or whatever you want and then it's got an even bigger pocket in the top there which you can put a laptop in or clothes or I keep my um, Lee filter pouch in there and on the bottom it's got 
these, I presume they're for holding a tripod, um, but it's really awkward because they're not quick release, they're just sort of normal buckles. So it takes an age to actually get the tripod out if you do put it there. So what I tend to do is once the bag is closed, I'll actually put my tripod down the side here and then just put that through two of the legs and just have the tripod hanging down, which seems to work well. Yeah, so that's my main everyday bag. Um, if I'm taking my gear out for a specialist shoot, I'll put everything in here and just carry it with me. And it's sort of nice big padded straps, nice padded back with mesh, so it's not too hot and not too heavy. Uh, my latest acquisition, um, especially for this wedding, um, I wanted a bag that was smart, um, that sort of didn't look like a photography bag, but could fit all my gear in. I had a look online and various reviews, and I ended up with this. It is the Think Tank Retrospective 30. It only arrived uh, two days ago, so I haven't actually taken it out and used it yet. Um, but just looking at it and sort of playing around with it, I love it already. I mean, it's so well thought out. They thought of everything. Um, the bit I especially loved is these um, quiet pouchy things here. Um, if you undo this, you've got Velcro, so you can close it down. Velcro. Just demonstrate. You've probably already seen it already, but do it again. So when you're out walking through town, you can have it and it's secured, it's velcroed, and to open it, you've got to make a hell of a noise to open it. And if you were in a wedding or a christening or something, you obviously don't want to be making that sort of noise in the middle of the ceremony. So, just put those flaps down, you can close the bag, you have this to hang there, so the bag is closed and secure, but if you need to open it, just pull it back. There's no velcro, so there's no noise, which I thought was brilliant. There's tons of room for... Um, at least one body and a 70 to 200. There's two big parities either side for uh, 24 to 70 and a flash or whatever lenses you've got. On the front there's two big parities which can hold uh, a body, pro body only, or another lens or another flash. It's got a rain cover. Um, in the back here it's got a nice big a zip pouch. Again, you put sort of bits and pieces in. There's like a business card holder thing there. On the side, there's kind of pockets on the side, but I don't think you get much in there to be honest, so I don't really know what they're for. It's got a nice big heavy duty padded strap. It's really well padded from really good quality sort of canvas strap. And then on the back, you've got another big zipped pocket, get to it, you should probably get like an iPad in, maybe a, a netbook or something like that. It's really comfortable to wear, so you can just wear it over your shoulder like that, it sits down by your side, and sort of swing it around to your back, and it doesn't look like a camera bag, it just looks like a kind of smart day bag, um, obviously you don't have to use it as a camera bag, you can put a suit in there and all sorts. Um, so yeah, I haven't taken this out yet and tested it, but I'm sure it's going to be fine. Um, I paid uh, £99 for this second hand. They're £135 brand new. You can get them in three different colours. This is the black. Um, the other one's kind of like a grey, kind of grey. It's called pine or something, or I can't remember what it's called. And there's a blue one as well. I thought this was a smarter option for a wedding. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep it after the wedding. I'll see. Um, I'll see how it goes, I probably will keep it, but uh, yeah, so that's my latest edition, and that is one, two, three, four, five bags, so I can't moan at my wife for having loads of handbags. Um, I think that's it, um, I've got some tripods as well, but um, they're just boring, I won't bother showing you, I've got a Gitzo and a Giotos and a Slick, and I think that's it, so yeah, that's all my gear, um, if you've got any questions on any of it, or any questions on any other gear um, just leave a comment and let me know um, and I'll be doing some more videos for you all soon. Cheers very much.